Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For your presence this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, hallelujah, for those that are with us today, hallelujah, and those that are online, hallelujah. We thank you, hallelujah, and we pray that, Lord, your presence be there in their homes, Lord, also, and with us today, Lord. Just show us and guide us and direct us through your word today, hallelujah. We thank you, amen. Praise God. And so, as you know, we are uh, continuing in our series Discovering the Secret Place, amen. And today, we're going to talk about standing in the gap, amen. Standing in the gap. So just think about that, amen. The Bible says, after doing all, just stand, amen. amen. And really when it's going to come down to it, I think what the Lord is saying here is that there is a certain people on this earth they kind of have no excuse for not being able to just stand before God. And you're called to stand before God in your family. That might be you. Man, in other words, there, there, there's other people that just can't. But you are, and you're called to stand before God. Amen. And so when we're standing in the gap, hallelujah, God uses us. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to see in some of the scriptures that um, he strengthens us, amen. And he ministers to us, and then he ministers to the people around us, hallelujah. But first, he always works on us first. So we can go to Ezekiel 22, book of Ezekiel 22, amen. And it's always, well, it's always important that these are scriptures that we know you know, about how the Lord looked for a man, a man, hallelujah, to stand in the gap. But it's always important to kind of realize what is the context of where, why the Lord is saying that. And so we see, when we see Ezekiel 22, one of the scriptures there in verse 18, it says, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All they are brass. In other words, What's going on is that um, the people of God were not doing what they needed to do. Amen. And so when he says he looks for a man, he's looking for somebody. Amen. A believer. Amen. Praise God. Verse 23 says, And the word of the Lord came unto me. And we know that that always is the case. When God is ready to do something, he always comes to us. Even from the beginning, when he says, Hey, Adam, where are you? Right? He was looking for a man even then. How did you? He already knew what happened. Amen. And verse 25, There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. Wow. Amen. It's okay. Amen. So, in Ezekiel 22 verse 25 it says they have taken the treasure the precious things they have made her many widows in the midst thereof amen verse 28 and her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar seen vanity and divine, divining lies Hallelujah. Them saying, thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. So again, this is about a certain time when God is ready to do something. Amen. And he's looking for the right person to deal with. And so when you think about standing in a gap, God is calling you. God is calling you. Amen. Praise God. And so... It says, amen, in verse 28, the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Verse 30, and I sought for a man. Because why? He sees the situation how it is. So what does he do? He looks for somebody. And that's where that context is at. Verse 30, Ezekiel 22, verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge 
and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that's the thing that God, when we talk about standing in the gap, that's that place in your prayer time where God's calling you, amen. And, and he's calling you, amen, to go in there and stand before him, amen, and before your, your, your family or, or just the world around you. <clears throat> Praise God. And so if we can go to uh, book of Daniel chapter 9, discovering the secret place, standing in the gap, Daniel chapter 9, starting with verse 1. And again, this is always that God is wanting to do something. He's ready to do something. And He might be ready to do something in your life, in your family. Amen? And that's, that's why and He's looking for you. And so in Daniel chapter 9... Verse 1, it says, In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the year thereof, uh, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. So here Daniel is also talking about well, we talk a lot about it in this Bible study about Jeremiah, right? How the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. God's word came. Daniel began to understand because the, a lot of historians, a lot of um, theologians will tell you one of the books that Daniel had was the book of Jeremiah. Amen. So he used the book of Jeremiah to be able to understand that something was happening. Amen? And so how are we going to understand that something's happening in our world? Through the Word of God. Amen? That's how you understand. So you have to be in your Word and in prayer so that you can stand in the gap. And so he says in Daniel chapter 9, chapter uh, verse 2, he says that through the through the prophet Jeremiah, amen, he knew that God was doing something with Israel, Jerusalem. In verse 3, and I set my face. I stood in the gap. Amen. I set my face. In other words, he realized, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? Pray. <laughs> How did you got to do? Pray. Amen. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and begging, right? Please, please, please. <laughs> Supplication. Amen. And a lot of times, Daniel shows us a really deep example here. Because instead of saying, look at God, how bad these people are. He says, God, look at us. We're all bad. Thank you, sis. All you have to do is twist the thing. Yeah, there you go. Make sure it's not Amen. Easy. Exactly. <laughs> Amen. So, he sets us an example for us. Because I don't care where you get in the Lord. Don't ever be self-righteous. If it was not for God, man, you would be just as... Could I be... Can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but we'd be worse than them. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so he says, I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer, supplication, with fasting. In other words, he sacrificed night eating and sackcloth and ashes. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, like, you know, hey, in them, them days, that just meant, you know what? It's going to be obvious what I'm doing. I'm not going to be comfortable. I'm not going to have my favorite sweater on amen I'm going to chastise myself before God wow man hallelujah who cares what I look like in other words amen and I prayed unto the Lord my God and made confession 
and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him. There it is, right? We got to love God. And to keep, keep them that keep his commandments, we, he didn't say they, we have sinned, have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled even by departing from your word and from your judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto your servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, to all the people of the land. O oh Lord, righteous be righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces as this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all of Israel that are near and afar off, though through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespasses, they have trespassed against thee. O oh Lord, to us belongeth confusion of faces. In other words, he understands why everything's happening because we're not right with God. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says, because we have sinned against thee to the to verse 9, to the Lord our God belongeth mercy and forgiveness. Through though we have rebelled against it, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws which he set before us by his servant, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore their curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him, and he hath confirmed his words. In other words, what he says, he does. Mm -hmm. Which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole earth hath not been done as hath done upon Jerusalem, as it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for, he, for we obeyed not his voice. In other words, God is doing, he is right, we're wrong. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, And now the Lord our God that hath brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand has has gotten the renown as at this day we have sinned we have done wickedly our lord our lord according to all thy righteousness i beg you let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city so here's this one guy daniel he's confessing his sins too but he's probably the best one out of all of them mm -hmm. because at least he's a believer that's why he's praying they're not Yes. And he said, now I'm going to have to stand in the gap. Oh, yeah. Right. Amen. I'm going to have to stand in the gap. Hallelujah. I beg you, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mount, because of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem, and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his beggings or supplications and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O oh my God, incline thine ear and hear upon thine eyes and behold oh, our Lord. desolation and the city which is called by thy name for we do not present our supplication before thee for our righteousness but for thy great mercies. Hallelujah. I'm here because I know that I can through your mercy. Oh, yes. Amen. That no matter how bad the situation is, when you're ready, man, you say, man, I'm ready. <laughs> I don't know about them, but I want to seek the Lord. Yes. Amen. I know that there's a mercy that'll let me get in there and I'll be all right. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, hear. Oh, Lord, forgive. Oh, Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake. Oh, my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whilst I was speaking, while I was speaking, 
and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, which is an angel, he's the one that, he's a messenger between God and people and his people. Amen. Even while I was Speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in a vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation, and he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Hallelujah. In other words, when you pray, God will start using you. You'll start understanding, and you'll be able to do something about it. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth. I am come to show thee, hallelujah, for thou art great, beloved, therefore the understanding, the matter, and the consider the vision. At the beginning, verse 23, of thy supplication, and the commandment came forth, that I am come to show thee, amen, at the beginning. In other words, when we first see that, right? What was the what did they say in the beginning, right? Verse three, and I set my face. See, God knows when you come inside that prayer closet, man. He's, oh man, oh man. I mean, so you don't even have to say anything because I already know. I already can, I can feel him already. Amen. He's right. He's ready. His heart. He really does. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? You know sometimes when you pray, you really pray. <laughs> and then sometimes you're like, oh, what am I going to say next? You know? <laughs> Hello, can we be real? That's right, amen. Hey, so that's the thing. And so he said, right, I mean, right as soon as he said one word, the angels were already being commanded, hey, this guy's for real right here. Amen. Verse, chapter 10. Chapter 10, amen. And we're going to look at that in verse 1 through 3. Daniel 10, verse 1 through 3. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel. Remember that revelation revealed. Amen. Because this is so important when you stand in the gap. Because God shows you things. To make it easier for you to pray for people. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar, and the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. So God shows you things sometimes, amen, and it's a long time before it happens. How many know that? It's true. It is true. Amen. But it doesn't mean you got to just all of a sudden forget about it or stop believing. you got to keep believing. Amen. And, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Again, there's just this one person standing in the gap. I ate no pleasant bread. He was fasting. He was praying. Hallelujah. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Amen. He fasted for three weeks. Amen. And so, hallelujah. We're going to look at verse 11. And I, and I want, to, and I want us, to be, uh, us to be in prayer about that. I know we have donuts there and everything. I had mine already. But I want, and you guys have some, don't, don't, oh, I can't. There's all kinds, I have two of them. But I want us at the same time to be thinking about this coming in year, about letting that spirit of fasting come into our mind and our heart. Okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 11, chapter 10 of Daniel. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. There's that word again, stand. Sin. Sin. For unto thee am I now sent. Just this one person. 
And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Hallelujah. Kind of like, man, for real, me? I'm the one, the one person standing in the gap. He's like, oh, wow. Help me, Jesus. I'm serious. Amen. Then said he unto me, fear not. Because it does seem overwhelming, right? Just imagine. For from the first day, again, there goes that thing, man, just when I knew you were real. For the first, from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Amen. Because of this one man that prayed and fasted. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. But the prince, but, see, because not only God knows who you are, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who the heck are you? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. That's what's happening right here. In a bigger way, actually. In the heavens. Mm -hmm. Exactly, huh? In the heavens. This is a big time right here. This is the big, the big ring. <laughs> Amen. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia. Amen. Which stood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael. Amen. One of the chief princes came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee. It says, now I'm, I was able to get free, and now I'm here. Mm -hmm. It took a battle because you started something. Mm -hmm. God used you. Amen. <laughs> All because of you. One person. Amen. This, this has to get into our system. It really does. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. Even today when people start studying the last days, they have, they have to look at the book of Daniel. Amen. Hallelujah. And it said, Befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. Amen. So we see, amen, in, in, our, um, in our notes, in our Facebook page, it says, The Power of One. One person, one believer, one worshiper, one who loves God, one who has a strong, consistent prayer life. Consistent. It was because of Daniel's consistent prayer life that led him to fasting. Mm. Amen. Because how many of us agree that fasting is not easy? Well, <laughs> bring me a donut. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's not get into the burritos right now, brother. <laughs> Anyways, so it's not easy, but when you have a consistent prayer life, God is going to bring it to your attention and you'll be able to set your face. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, one who has a strong, consistent prayer life. Let's go to Genesis 18. And sometimes you have to kind of look at it, remember. Um, it don't matter who else is or isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, don't fall into that trap. You know, one thing I learned from what they, you just said is that Daniel made a covenant. Mm -hmm. And he stuck to that covenant. He stuck to it, yeah. Yeah. And then God's always making covenants with us and asking us to make agreements with him. Yeah. And that's what Daniel did. And he stuck it all the way out. Right. And fought the battle. <clears throat> he went and followed it all the way through. And that, but, but you know what about that covenant, though? Here's the thing about that. Is it began when he set his face because God knows when you're for real. Yeah. Amen. So Genesis 18, verse 1. If you have a say, amen. amen. And the Lord appeared unto him again. This is just one person. 
in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Amen. This is talking about Abraham. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. And what's going on here is that God is coming through. Amen. And if this is what happens in our lives too. God comes by us. Hallelujah. But he can find out how interested we are. Amen. You know, if we get a hold of him and say, hey, don't, don't just pass by me. Get his attention and grab a hold of him. And this is what he's doing right here. Pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let, uh, let, a, let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. In other words, stay here for a while. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort your hearts after that you pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, so do, and thou hast said. In other words, Abraham, amen, entertain the presence of God. And Abraham hastened unto the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of meat, knead it, and make cakes upon the earth. And Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto the young man. And he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and, calf, and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree. And they did eat. And they said unto him, where is Sarah? So this is what happens when you get a hold of God and you spend some time with God. He begins to minister to your needs. Mm -hmm. See, remember the Bible says He already knows what you need before you ask it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you got to spend some time with Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what He begins to do here. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He begins, hallelujah, to minister, amen, to Him. And He says, and He said unto him, where is Sarah, your wife? Why? Because Abraham wanted a, 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 a child and he couldn't have a child. He hasn't even prayed yet and God already is going to give him what he already knows he wants. Amen? And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. Amen? And that's God's word. Your wife is going to have a son, right? Later on, we know that Abraham and Sarah couldn't wait, and they ended up thinking God was going to do it some other way. But God's word was clear. Your wife is going to have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. And now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. In other words, she passed her age for having babies. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also. In verse 12, you know, people think of this in so many different ways. I really believe that she really wanted what God was saying. She was gonna, he was going to give her. But she was having a hard time believing it. She could like imagine it. Wow, really? Nah, I'm too old. <laughs> Hey, some people will say she doubted. I don't think she really doubted. She was old. She really got into the idea, the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord comes to you, and sometimes it's like, wow, really? <laughs> wow. Nah, I can't be. Hello? <laughs> See? And that's what's going on, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I... Shall I of a surely bear a child which I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? So anything that God tells you, is that too hard for God? No. no. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. 
Hallelujah. Verse 15. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid, and said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. So, now, okay, here's what's, what's what's going on here. God, our relationship with God, our discovering a secret place, our prayer time with God, God wants to minister to you in your life. But then he also wants you to understand what he's doing around you. And he wants to get you involved. How many times are we always so worried about what we need? And we don't stop to think, well, God's going to come by me to help me with what I need. But he's also going to want to use me to help people. Mm -hmm. So you always think of it that way. And that's what's happening right here. Hallelujah. He says, in verse 16, And the men rose up from thence, and now God, after he ministered to Abraham, his focus is now in his other thing he's there to do. He looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them in the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? In other words, shall I, shouldn't I tell Abraham what I'm planning to do? And that's what God is wanting for you to know what God is doing. Amen? And seeing that Abraham, why? Why wouldn't I hide that from Abraham? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty person. Amen? Nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know Abraham is somebody that I have to use. Amen? For I know him and and that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment and the Lord may bring that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him and the Lord said because of the cry in other words right here verse 20 God is telling Abraham what he is planning to do he's letting them know why he's there besides just to minister to him and his family Verse 20, and the Lord said, because of the cry of Sodom. So just think of, about what's going on around you. Can you hear the cry? Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe not. That's why we have to be more into prayer. because So you can feel the cry of what's going on around you. People suffering all around you, man. Mm -hmm. People suffering all around us because of sin and what's going on. Hallelujah. Amen. In this world. And it says, hallelujah, in verse 18, verse 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because of their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is coming to me. And if not, I will know. In other words, God knows the time. God knows what's going on. Hallelujah. Verse 20, 22. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. Hallelujah. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So um, those, the angels, the men, there was three, three, three persons. One was God and two angels. Amen. The angels were already given their, their commands. They were already going to Sodom to do what they had to do. Now, the only one that's left there is Abraham and God. No matter what we think, this thing is going to come to an end. The only thing left now is how many people get saved. Amen. The only thing left now is for us to get before God, amen, for our family, amen. for the people around us. No, really. I mean, like, um, who was it the... What's it? The prostitute that that they saved before they 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 brought down the walls of Jericho. Rahab. 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 Mm -hmm. Remember Rahab? They said, "Man, if you could get many people as you could get into your house, they're the ones that are going to get saved." And that's us too. We have to cram as many people and say, <laughs> "But but you know what? Here's the thing: you have to realize sometimes we do this wrong. We go over there." Mm -hmm. 
and hit them over the head with the Bible. <laughs> if you don't, you're going to hell. You know, whatever we tell them. Who knows? I'm just exaggerating, right? When really the story is telling us we have to just be praying between, for God for them. Stand again. That's the main thing. No. And then when it's time, you won't have to hit them with the, over the head with your Bible. You won't have to. You'll just push them with the little finger like this, and they'll fall over into God's hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's what's going on. It says, Hallelujah. Uh, and, and Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And verse 23, And the Lord drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy? And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Uh, suppose, verse 24, there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for, for the 50 righteous that are therein? If there's 50, will you still do what you're going to do, God? Verse 25, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be at the wicked. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And, uh, and really, that's what's going on in this world right now. The reason why it's still intact is because the church is here right now. Verse 27, And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak. I have started to pray. Why don't I just keep going deeper into my prayer? Hallelujah. Lord, you already saved my son. Will you please save my cousin? Will you, see, <laughs> will you please save my uncle? Will you please save my cousin that's on drugs? My homeless cousin? Will you? Uh, can I just keep talking? Yeah, keep talking. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 28. Suppose there shall lack five and fifty. Their righteous wealth will destroy the city for the lack of five. And he said, I will, I will, if I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto me yet again and said, Suppose there be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto me, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. Believe me, the Lord is not angry. And I will speak, suppose there shall be 30 be found there. And he said, will, will, will not do it. And I find 30 there. And he said, behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Suppose there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the 20 sake. And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak yet uh, but this once, this is the last time, hallelujah, suppose ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy for the ten's sake and the Lord. And what does that tell us? There was not ten righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. okay. Hallelujah. But you think about it. I know a lot of people kind of turn it around and say, well, he should have kept praying. And that's okay. I'm not saying anything against that. But the truth is, there wasn't ten righteous people. Mm -hmm. Well, the Lord was great because of the sin. The Lord was great because of the sin. Yeah. He, he didn't want it. Yeah. Amen. And so, verse 33, And the Lord went his way as soon as he had commune, he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Amen. Praise God. So in our notes uh, that we have, it says God comes and ministers to you, your life, your purpose, your calling, as you are communing with Him. I mean, how many people want God to minister to their lives, right? That's what, that's where He mostly does it. Amen. God comes and shows you His will. When you are communing with God. See? Because a lot of the stuff that we do get is from teaching and preaching. But you need to get stuff where it's just you one-on-one -on -one with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
because that'll give you a stronger conviction of your own personal walk with God. God comes and shows us his will plan for our, sur for our surroundings, for our world with him. Share his work and impact our world and reach the lost. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Matthew 11. Matthew 11, verse 23. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Matthew 11, verse 23. And this is what it says. It says, And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted into heaven shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. In other words, there would have been more than 10 righteous people in Sodom. Amen. If they would have just had enough time <laughs> or somebody would have did stuff in that city, right? Amen like Jesus is doing right here in this context. But I say unto you that it shall be more tol tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. In other words, because you have me doing all these things here and you still don't believe. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Lord. And here is Jesus praying. Here's Jesus praying, amen. Amen. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them unto babes. Just again, God wants to reveal his plan to you. He wants to be able to come by your life, amen, and show you things that he's doing in your life and in your family mm -hmm. and our surroundings, amen. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. That's what God wants to do. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father except the Son, and he to whosoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me. Right? That's what he's saying. Come unto me. Hallelujah. You that labor. Hallelujah. And are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Come to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, when, you know, a lot of the stuff we are doing, it's, it's, it's kind of a lot of work. It gets heavy. It gets hard. Hallelujah. Life can be. Amen. And it says, when we come to the Lord, He gives us rest. Yes, Jesus. Right? He gives us rest. Hallelujah. And then in verse 28, He says, take my yoke. Amen. In other words, get busy doing the work that I have. Because most of this life, we are working. No matter what, man, we're working. Amen. Hallelujah. Life can be hard. Instead, let's take God's work. That's what he's saying. Take on my yoke upon you and learn of me. Hallelujah. It says, <clears throat> For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Hallelujah. That's, that's what God, you know, when we get busy, when we see what God, amen, is really wanting to do. And when we have that consistent prayer life, amen, hallelujah, we go to the Lord and then God begins to use us. He ministers to our life. We find that rest. We find that peace. We find that abundant life. Amen. Praise God. But then we take on his yoke and we start working the works of God. 
Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Praise God. So when we have that yoke, right, we're right there with Jesus Christ. We're, we're um, what do they call that? Um, On-the-job training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why he says, and, and that, I think that's why he says that my yoke is easy. Right? Because Jesus is right there with you. Hallelujah. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Hallelujah. And you shall find rest unto your souls. Hallelujah. Jesus just makes it so easy. I think that's the key, really. Verse 29. That when you learn of God, you realize, Amen. He's for you. He's not a man that he should lie. He makes it easier. The closer you walk with God, the easier you're going to walk with God. Yes. yes. That's why it says easier. Because, I mean, how many times we look at that scripture and say, well, wait a minute, it's not that easy. <laughs> My, you're, you're looking at me kind of, it, it's true. I mean, but, but why is Jesus saying it's easy? Because we have to be yoked. We have to be really close to God. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. When we walk really close to God, amen, things just seem to be a lot easier. Yes. That's, it just is. That's true. Yes. yes. And then when we start kind of getting away from God, things get really hard. We're like, <laughs> oh, man. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek. And when we learn about God, it makes it easier for us. It just makes it easier for us when we learn about God. We learn about Jesus. We know Him. Amen. When we know God. Hallelujah. Right? The, the, the uh, King of kings, the Lord of lords. We're walking with Him. I mean, no one's going to mess with us, man. We got... <laughs> The champion. Hallelujah. Amen. For I am meek and lowly and of heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Amen. That's when you just say, Ah, I'm where I need to be. Close to Jesus. I'm where I need to be. Amen. Praise God. For my yoke is easy and my burden. There is a burden. Amen? There is a burden. In other words, that's the work. That's the labor, he says. Hallelujah. Amen. The harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. Amen? That's that burden. That's that burden. That's that field of, of, of labor that God is calling us to. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and that's what he wants us to be focused in. That, that's what I said uh, yesterday and as we get ready to finish up for today amen that um, we'll see what, how, what pastor Cass is out there for the new years for the new years the, the uh, watch night service but I would be surprised if he doesn't talk about hallelujah um, being busy amen um, action the year of action right that this year we really have to start doing more for God, being in, in that field of harvest, reaching souls, amen, hallelujah. I really believe that's what's going to be happening this year. So let's, um, as we get ready to finish, remember to be in prayer, hallelujah, so that we could be right there wherever God's going to want us to be for this coming year, amen, hallelujah. And you know what? God's going to help us set our face. Mm -hmm. God's going to help us set our heart, amen, because I, I believe God's going to be calling us it's some time of fasting this year. Mm -hmm. Amen. So enjoy your donuts right now. Because... <laughs> <laughs> amen. I really believe that. So amen. Take them. And, and I believe God's going to be calling us in some time of fasting this year. Amen. So we can reach souls. Yeah. We can stand, stand in the gap for somebody. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes the hardest thing is the right thing. Mm. 
You know, you really want to do something, but even like Daniel, he's confessing, right? He said, we, we really want to just do whatever we want to do. We don't really want to do what you want us to do. And that's why we're in so much trouble. And so sometimes, like, just like Daniel, we've got to confess the same thing. We've been trying to find the easy road. Amen. So let's finish with prayer. Amen. And let's thank God. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we get ready to finish today for your word today, God. And we pray, Lord, hallelujah. Amen. Lord, we know that you, your word is already blessed. But I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you help us set our heart. Help us set our mind, Lord, this year. Hallelujah. Going into this new year, God. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Help us set our heart. Help us set our mind and our vision, Lord, in the right place, Lord God. Help us to be ready going into this new year, Lord God, to do whatever Whatever you want to be done, Lord, we ask it, Father, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, we ask. And, Lord, we know, Lord God, that you are hearing our prayers, Lord God. And, Lord, we pray that according to you, Lord, according to your, your will and your word, for your name's sake, hallelujah, Lord, that your grace be poured upon us, that your spirit will be poured upon us, Lord God, that we would be ready going into this new year, Lord God, hallelujah to reach the lost to lord enter into your labors or enter into your burden lord be yoked with you lord we ask it father in jesus name amen praise god hallelujah praise the lord right there where you are so thank him in jesus name